Hey, and welcome back to Sonic Safari, a channel featuring tales of record collecting. I'm your host, Marcus, a Swedish hipster lost in the fog here in San Francisco. So I hope you checked out my last video about how and why I purged my record collection and why that event is so important for the health of my collection long term. This week, I'm super excited to talk about Vinyl Me Please, the vinyl subscription service, and a new feature that has made me reconsider how I use them to find new records. So let's jump right into it, shall we? So if you're not familiar with Vinyl Me Please, it's a record of the month subscription service that was launched in 2013. They have four tracks, classics, essentials, hip hop, and the fairly new country. You pick one track, you get a record of the month, if you don't like it, you can swap it for another record of the month or you can swap it for a record from their exclusive store. So this Blossom Dairy release, her self-titled debut on Verve Records, originally released in 1957, was the reason I signed up in the first place. This is great vocal jazz and I love her cheeky, sexy voice. And I was really surprised with the quality both of the jacket and the vinyl, which sounded great. So we were off to a really good start. So in the summer of 2020, Find Me Please increased the prices of their subscription substantially and there was quite the uproar at the time, and justifiably so. Find Me Please said that the increases were really tied to maintaining quality, but in the end, quality is a subjective word. So to me, the question was really, would Find Me Please be able to have the kind of releases that would justify paying $36 per record, which is what I would pay for my annual subscription? This is not cheap, but not crazy either, considering what new records go for these days, and it includes shipping. So I really think that the answer to that is no. The jacket and the vinyl itself have maintained the same quality after the price increase, not better, not worse, but the type of releases have been really inconsistent. And it has been a long time that I haven't had a, oh my God, I can't believe they're releasing that record type of moment. So the reason why I'm keeping my classic subscription has nothing to do with the track itself, to be honest. It's tied to a new feature that Vinyl Me Please introduced October of last year called Swap for Store Credit. According to their website, this feature is still in beta and it's pretty straightforward. Instead of swapping your record of the month for another record, you can take the value of that monthly record and get credit in their store instead. I think this is an absolutely brilliant move and the reason why I'm keeping my subscription. Without it, I would have cancelled it. So the problem I had was as a new subscriber to the Classics track, I would swap the record more times than I would keep it. Now in the beginning, that wasn't really an issue because there was so much to choose from, from old records of the month or from their store. But over time, if you swap more than you keep, your option gets limited. Now with the introduction of the store credit, this problem is solved. So what really works for me is that on one side I have the option to have the store credit, and on the other side I feel like the exclusive to Vinyl Me Please store is getting better and better at carrying new releases, often in some kind of limited or exclusive fashion. Like for example Big Thieves upcoming release Dragon New Mountain, I Believe in You, which of course I got. So personally, I don't really mind accumulating store credit just waiting for a release that I really, really want, knowing that I will get it on a limited format. And these limited editions tend to either maintain or even increase the value on the secondary market. So it's almost like my record of the month subscription has turned into a pool of credit that I use for the exclusive store instead. I'm super excited when me please launch this new swap for credit feature. And now all I could ask for is a separate jazz track, and then I have everything I need. Because Mind Me Please is a bit of a hit and miss, but when they get it right, it is really, really great. Like these ones. So this is Lee Morgan Quintet, Take 12, originally released on Jazzland in 1962. This record came out only two years before Signwinder, which a lot of people consider to be one of the best jazz recordings ever, but trust me, this one is not far behind. I wonder if the title is a riff on Dave Brubeck's Take 5, but who knows. And then we have this one, Towns Van Sant, self-titled, originally released in 1969, and this one is on Fat Possum Records. This is one of my favorite singer-songwriters, and what's interesting about this, his third release, is that it includes four songs from his first release, For the Sake of the Song, which Towns found to be too overproduced the first time around, and I have to agree with him. The stripped down versions are much better. This one comes on this honey gold black spatter. Not sure what the color is, but it looks pretty. And last but not least, 
This one, the white stripes, the steel from 2000. This is the 20th year anniversary from Third Man Record. I absolutely adore the New York wave of rock. It was such a creative explosion and just rock in all shapes and sizes. It's not their best release, but it's still a really solid garage rock album. This one comes on this red vinyl with black splatter, which looks pretty cool. And also this print, which is a rendition of Jack White's tremolo amplifier, which I really like. So, as you can see, Miami Police do release some really great records, and I do plan to continue to use them as long as they support this new, what I think, great feature, the store credit. I would love to hear what you think, though. All right, so that's it for today's episode. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Next week, we're going to talk about vinyl record predictions for 2022. Until then, tack, voya.